Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to go over a 3C collet system that I bought for the lathe. As many of you are probably aware, I have been using the three Morris taper collets in my lathe for quite some time now, and they have been perfect. I have not had a single issue with these collets uh, since I've been using them for a little over a year and a half now. But I have always wanted to uh, upgrade to the 3C collets and we'll go over the differences in between the collets and why I wanted to get the 3C uh, at the end of the video. Now I did not go out and buy the genuine South Bend uh, collet system because they are expensive. Uh, I've seen just the drawbar uh, go for two, three hundred dollars on eBay. And honestly, for what it is, it's not worth it, in my opinion. Uh, so the one that I purchased is one from Little Machine Shop. And it's their 3C Universal Collet Closure. And it's universal in the fact that the draw bar, or the draw tube rather, is 18 inches. And you have to cut it down to fit your particular application. Now the the system from Little Machine co Shop comes with the draw tube, the hand wheel, which is held on by two set screws, and then the slip collar. And also along with that, you get the three Morris taper to 3C adapter. Now let's head over to the lathe and get this fitted and after that, we'll talk about the differences between the collets and why I wanted to uh, switch to the 3C collets. Okay, while we're working on this end of the spindle, make sure you unplug the lathe just so you don't accidentally turn it on on yourself. Now, the draw tube, uh, the threads in it, are deep enough to fully engage the threads on the collet. And if you put the collet into the adapter, you'll notice that the threads do not completely extend past uh, the adapter. So what that means is when you screw the uh, draw tube onto the collet, the draw tube will actually bottom out onto the adapter. So how we're going to measure it is we'll put the adapter into the spindle and then we'll stick our draw tube in and butt it up against the adapter and then we'll take a scribe and mark where the spindle or mark the end of the spindle onto the adapter or on the draw tube all right next we need to mark off where we need to cut off the draw tube and to do that we'll add to our witness mark the width of the slip collar and the boss on the hand wheel which is just over, well, not just over, it's roughly an inch and seven eighths, we'll call it. However, for me, I do not like this hand wheel, so I want to eventually uh, change this over to one that's more suited to my old lathe here. I wanna get one of the uh, three-spoked cast iron hand wheels uh, to put on it. So I'm actually gonna cut it off a little long because I don't know how big the boss is on the hand wheel that I'm going to be getting. So I am going to cut it off uh, at about uh, adding to this witness mark from where the spindle ends. I'm going to add uh, two and a quarter inches. So that's going to give me uh, a little over half an inch extra um, from our current hand wheel and slip collar. And I think that'll be plenty for when uh, I get the new hand wheel. So we'll just put a little mark on there. Now we'll get it centered up in our fore jaw and we'll use the cutoff blade for that. You can also just use a, uh, a hacksaw would be fine too. All 
All right, so the battery in my microphone died, and we lost audio there for a little bit. So I'm going to try and do a little voiceover, uh, see how that goes. What I'm doing now is just centering up the draw tube and the four jaw chuck so that I can part it off and face it to its final length. Alright, now we need to turn down the outer diameter so that the slip collar and the hand wheel will fit. The outside diameter of the draw tube is about three quarters of an inch. And we need to turn that down uh, to about 628. Now we're going to turn down this diameter to about 20 thousandths beyond the scribe line we made that marks the end of the spindle. This is so that we can ensure that the draw tube is not going to bottom out on the adapter. Now what we're getting ready to do now is check the runout of the adapter. And first I want to check the runout of the spindle and see where it's at. And the runout of my spindle is within a few tenths of an inch. A few tenths of a thousandth of an inch. Now we're just going to clean out the spindle taper and the adapter taper and get it set. Now the runout of the adapter is the same as my spindle. Uh, that just tells me that the adapter is ground true and it's just matching whatever runout uh, the adapter is fit to. I went ahead and put the draw tube together. It was just a matter of putting the slip collar on and tightening the set screws for the hand wheel. 
we're going to use a 3 8 collet and hold a piece of 3 8 drill rod uh, to check the run out of the 3 8 collet. I don't have any other size drill rod to be able to check the rest of my collets. Um, I'm just basing uh, the run out of the rest of the collets on this one collet and hopefully they're all relatively the same. I'm not too fussed about it. We're going to check the run out in two places, right up next to the collet and extend it out uh, about you know, a little over an inch and a half beyond the collet. And again, right at the collet, the run out is within a few tenths. So the collet and the adapter are running true together and just matching the run out of my spindle. Now out here, uh, extended uh, to about an inch and a half, the run out is a little bit more. And I don't know uh, what the cause of that is. It very well could be the drill rod that I'm using. It is an old piece of drill rod that's been banged around quite a bit, and it could be uh, slightly warped a little bit. Um, there's really no telling. But out here in the uh, about an inch and a half beyond the collet, the run out's about a thousandth of an inch. And even that far out, it's, uh, I'm not too worried about it. Now we're going to move the drill rod in a little bit. And we'll go ahead and make a facing cut to see how the collets hold up to the load. Now I was using a insert that's pretty dull, so the finish isn't all that great, uh, and I didn't completely take out all the saw marks. But uh, overall, the collet held up well in this test anyway. Uh, we'll see how well they hold up uh, in the future, because these are uh, cheap collets. Sorry about that folks, the battery in my microphone died, we lost audio there for a little bit. Overall I'm pretty satisfied with this uh, collet system from Little Machine Shop. Uh, I don't foresee there being any issues with it. As for the reasons why I wanted to upgrade to the 3C collet versus the Morris Taper, uh, the biggest reason is because that little Barker PM mill that I have, I'll leave a link in on the screen. Um, for the disassembly video of that, but that little mill also takes 3C collets in the spindle. So it only made sense to have a full set of collets that I can use for both that little mill and my lathe.
rather than having the two sets. Now I don't have a full set of Morse tapers. I was just buying them as I needed them. Uh, so I only have three. I believe I have a three eighths, a uh, seven sixteenths and a half inch. Those are the three that I have. Now, one thing that I wanted to take advantage of with the 3C is the ability to pass stock all the way through. Now with the Morris Taper, you are limited to, uh, I believe it's about an inch and a sixteenth. Let's see. Yep, an inch and a sixteenth stock, at least with this 3 eighths collet. Um, inch and a sixteenth stock into the chuck, or collet. And the reason why you would want to be able to pass stock all the way through is it helps eliminate waste stock. So with the 3C, you can put your full length of stock all the way through it and just have sticking out what you want to machine and then part it off. With the Morris Taper collets, you know, you have to cut off however much you need. You know, you need to cut off the inch and a sixteenth that will go into the collet and then however much you need to machine. And when you're done machining it, you know, you have this little inch and a sixteenth bit that's uh, left over. And that's the waste stock that you want to try to avoid. Now, there are uses for these little short bits, but uh, when they're this short, they're difficult to hold. And the uses for them are pretty few and far between, at least in my case, they are. So, with the ability to pass stock all the way through, you eliminate having all these little short bits of stock in your scrap drawer. Another advantage of the 3C is that it is self-releasing. With the Morris Taper, as many of you are aware, they are a locking taper. So when you put these into the spindle, you have to tap on the drawbar to be able to release the collet. And I admit, when I first started using these, I was pretty apprehensive about it. Because with these older lays, the spindle is a pretty sensitive part of it. And tapping on the back of the spindle to release these collets uh, isn't ideal uh, for a lot of people. But after using these for the past year and a half, I have not seen any ill effects. So I don't, I don't think it's much of an issue anymore. Now a disadvantage of the 3C is that it only goes up to a half inch. For me, that's not much of a disadvantage because anything over a half inch... I would rather just use the three jaw chuck or the four jaw if I need the accuracy. That'll do it for uh, for that part. Um, I know in the video about this Char's three jaw chuck, I said that the next video was going to be about making the backing plate for this guy, and it's not, and I apologize for that. Um, I do have the backing plate mostly finished as you can see what I am lacking is the ability to tr accurately transfer the mounting holes on the chuck to the backing plate now I do have a set of mounting or not mounting uh, transfer screws on order uh, they should be here today I believe once they get here I can finish up the video for this and get that posted for you guys with that that'll do it for this video I thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.